and stuff. I think, I think, I think we start from when I was a child and we got along after the war okay. when we had to leave and we got put on a train. Okay. Well, after, after what war? World War II. Yeah. Well, I was born in 1940, in December 21st, and I had a I had a sister who was seven years older and a brother who was nine years older. My dad, who was a cobbler from profession, he got drafted in '39. Or early 40. I'm not quite sure about that. But he got drafted. He held out as long as he could. And he was transferred to Russia to fight in Stalingrad. Okay. And my mother worked in a factory. And then after she had me, uh, in those days there was wasn't anything about, you know, like a daycare center or anything like that. You stayed home. The same factory that she worked that she worked at, she did, took work home. What she was doing, and they give you this kind of little machine. Uh -huh. She was embroidering baby clothes. Oh wow! And uh, so she could do that at home and make money because you know. There was no such thing as helping, helping the women that stayed behind. Oh know, yeah. No way. So anyway, um, my mo my mother. I have the two letters, the last to the the last one, and the other one that was before that. I still have them. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the last letter she received. Or what was my dad was told her in the letter before that he had leave that he was coming home for Christmas uh, 40, 42. He was coming home for Christmas, okay. and then what happened was his best friend, who was from the same town. Um, he had a family, and his little son got really, really sick, and they didn't think he was going to make it. And his leave was was in in February of '44. So my um, dad traded vacations with him, and that's in the, in that letter before the last. He said, we'll have our Christmas in February. Mm -hmm. Well, things got so bad in Russia um, that he wrote a letter home and he said, we're not going to get out of here. We're totally encircled by the Russians. Wow. Um, they don't, the, the German army is not dropping any supplies in anymore. Uh, we don't have nothing to eat. And my dad was, um, they had two horses, or four horses. Um, I don't remember correctly, but I got a picture of him with a horse, and I knew that from my mom's stories. Um, and uh, they were pulling the wagon. They were not right in front, mm -hmm. you know, so. But they weren't dropping any food or anything for the soldiers anymore. What do I? Uh, because it would fall in the Russian hands, because the circle was getting smaller and smaller. Okay. And he told her in that letter that she's going to have to be strong and take care of the kids because he didn't think he was going to make it home. Well, he also, well, I, this guy that he had changed with, Mm -hmm. He was, he talked to my mom, he went to my mom to visit her, and uh, he talked about my dad and what, what they were doing and stuff, and, and he told her that 
it got so bad before he left that um, they had to kill. They killed the horses uh, and ate the. Well, when they killed them, they took everything out mm -hmm. of the horse, and then they would crawl into the horse to keep warm because they were so frozen. Oh wow! And uh, then when the horse got cold, then they took the meat and. If they found any kind of twigs and stuff, they made a fire until the mattress ran out. Wow. Yeah. And that was the last they, they got. So, and then his, the general that was in charge of the Sixth Army that my dad was in, he surrendered to the Russians. Really? Yeah. So, I don't know if he died on the march up to Siberia. Or um, he got shot, or I don't know. The only thing I do know uh, is my daughter went on the internet and she researched it, and she found a mass grave in Russia where he's buried. Wow. It's his first name, middle name, and date of birth. And so she found that. Do you plan on visiting that? I'm sorry? Do you plan on visiting that? No. no. I wouldn't go to Russia. No way. Well, so my mom was still hoping, you know, that he would be coming home. But, and then after the war was over, uh, I got to kind of backtrack a little bit. Um, before, before World War One, we belonged our country was, we all spoke German, mm -hmm. but it was right between Germany and Czechoslovakia. It's just a tiny little spot. Uh -huh. It's called Sudetenland. Say that again? So, Sudetenland. You might want to write that down. S-U-D-E-T-E-N-L-A-N-D. Because I know there are Germans in this town, and they would know about Sudetenland. Okay. Um, anyway, before World War One, we belonged to Germany. And I think it was, or Austria, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it was Austria, belonged to Austria, because my grandma used to say that was the best time when we belonged to Austria. Oh, yeah. Um, and then after World War One, we we were getting to Czechoslovakia. Well, when Hitler came to power, the first thing he did was come and get Sudetenland back from Czechoslovakia. So when the war was over, there was a conference in. Potsdam, Germany. I've been there uh, with Churchill and Stalin and Roosevelt. And in that, they decided what land each of those three are going to get. And uh, Czechoslovakia got our little country back. So by that time, the, the Czechs were so, I mean, what the Germans did to them was just horrendous, you know. Yeah. And they hated the Germans with a passion. So they wanted everybody out, out of that piece of Sudetenland. Well, first of all, they came usually in the middle of the night and knock on the door, and then they would look around and take whatever, you know, like we had a real nice radio my mm -hmm. dad bought and it took that. And, wow. and he had bought my brother an accordion and my mom hid that so they never did find it. But you know, like bedding and stuff like that they would take. And then See, the war was over the 8th of May in 45, 
And then, in the beginning of June, my mom got notice to come down to the courthouse. And my grandma said, take Annalise with you. And I rem remembered kind of that, you know, just a little bit, because mm -hmm. I was four. And I remember I had a pair of uh, knee socks on. My grandma had knit me. They were white, and they come up to the knees, and they had like a, um, a string to them where you could tie them. Uh -huh. And at the end, it had pom-poms, oh, two little pom-poms. So she took me with her, and they informed her that she had 24 hours to pack 30 pounds for each person in the household, and then go to the meeting plots or whatever. Uh, a plots is something like a, like a center, but okay. it's outside. You know, mm -hmm. like courtyard. Okay, and like the Willem Till plots that we have here. Yeah. Sort of. Okay. So, and then they seen my white knee socks, and they made my mom take my knee socks off. I remember her taking my socks off. Because okay. I said that was Hitler, like to do that, have the kids dressed in white knee socks. Oh. And they kept them. Wow. I remember that. And, uh, so in 24 hours she packed, and I remember we had a baby carriage, and that was full with this with stuff, you know, because 30 pounds is not very much. Not at all. And um, that was all there, and then she set me on the care on top of the on the carriage, and we went to the center, and uh, they gave us some papers. And there was where the, where the center was, beyond the center was nothing but woods. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, my, let's see, there was, there was just my mother, my brother, my sister, and I. But my mother's mother, her husband had already passed, but my mother's mother, my mother's sister, uh, my mother's brother, he was 16, mm -hmm. he was 15, going on 16, and um, her sister's a little, was just a baby, she was maybe a year, a little bit over a year, okay. but they got to stay, but just us had to go. And, uh, then they told us to go in the woods. Then they started shooting. Why, why and, did they get to stay? Because they, they hated the Germans with a passion. Mm -hmm. They wanted revenge for all the stuff that the Germans did during the war to their people, you know. That's human nature, I guess. I guess. And so anyway, they started shooting. And one of the guys that was there was an older man. And he told my mom, he said, you better start running. So we ran like crazy, and we didn't know where to go. You know, my mom didn't know where to go. Yeah. So she had some, my sister would in the summertime uh, go to a farm uh, couple for the summer on vaca for vacation um, and, you know, help out there, but, you mm -hmm. know, just to get out of the city. Yes. And uh, so my mom remembered that. So she went, walked towards it. And she found the railroad tracks and she would go on the side of the railroad tracks through the woods. And uh, we made it there. And um, the lady said her house had a big hole in the roof because a bomb went through it. And uh, she had all her family there. She said, I got standing room only. Yeah. And she gave her a head of cabbage. And she said, that's 
I could give you that, she said, but that's it. And from there, it's, I remember it started to rain and we were standing underneath uh, uh, a street lamp. And I know my mom was crying, but you couldn't really tell uh, because it was raining so hard. And I remember my sister trying to say, and my brother saying to her, Mama, don't cry. Mama, don't cry. We'll make it. We'll make it. So, while we were standing there, all of a sudden, here comes her little brother. His name was... I afraid, but they call him Fred. Uh -huh. And he was he was a rowdy kind of guy, you know. I mean he knew the woods like like the back of a sand. Mm -hmm. And he said, We're going back home. Well first of all, they went to a train station. Well trains weren't running, but at least they were had a cover, you know, were and there was benches there, so uh, we stayed the night there. And she said, he said, we have to walk around during the day a little bit or stay here. He said, we can only go during the night when it's dark. And he said, uh, uh, so he went, my mom gave him some money, and he went to a drugstore and bought some kind of pills. And uh, I remember my mom giving me a pill. And uh, I didn't want to take it. Yeah. You know, kids don't like take take pills. Mm -hmm. And she said, "You have to. You have to. You have to take it." And I fell asleep. And that's where it was. I was afraid going back to the woods. There were guards all over. Okay. You know. Um, so he would go a little bit. And that's what my mom told me. And she carried me piggyback. And uh, left the, the carriage there and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he, she carried me piggyback, and my her her brother, would, my uncle, would go a little bit further ahead and scout it out and come back and get us. And that's how we made it back home. Wow, with uh, nothing, with Just nothing, yourself. nothing. And our our apartment where we were living. Uh, her brother said, it's already, uh, somebody already else is living there. And, uh, he said they moved in right after you guys left. Oh. So we stayed with my grandma, who was across the courtyard. And we heard gunshots and all kinds of stuff, you know. That's what they would do if they catch you, they shoot you. Yeah. And that was it. And my grandma was so glad that we were back. Mm -hmm. But we had to be careful so we didn't get notice, mm -hmm. you know. So you were hiding and right. your grandma had to worry right. about that. Well, we, we got lucky. Um, we needed some luck, that's mm -hmm. for sure. But we got lucky. A guy that was a really good friend with my dad but he was a communist, and he got arrested and put in the concentration camp wow. when Hitler was in power. Well, he got released, and he came home, and he found out about us. Mm -hmm. And he said, don't worry about it. I'll fix it. And I don't know what he did, but he said, you can go around now, you know, grocery store and stuff like that. You don't have to be afraid. Well, you, they're, they're not. You're gonna stay here. They're not gonna uh, make you go again. Yeah. And because uh, it was all communist. You know. So then my grandma and my mom's sister and her brother and her little girl got orders to go. And my mom said, "No way. If you going, we're all going." Yeah. So we all went. Again. Again. Yeah. But by that time, they were a little bit more organized. They had a, a center where you could go to. Again, a big hole in the ceiling and in the floor. And we were up on the third floor, and they had, I remember that so vividly, 
they had bunk beds three high on the sides of the wall mm -hmm. and where, where the windows were on this side there weren't any beds but they were like hot plates so you could cook something if you had something you know mm -hmm. um, and my aunt she needed milk for her baby so Alfred and my brother would go and Alfred he knew Fred I mean my mother's brother mm -hmm. uh, he always found something. They found the cow and milk that dry. <laughs> and that's what he did. Wow. And so we, and we, I remember there was straw covered on the floor. And the men, the older men that were there or the younger boys, they would sleep on the floor. And so the first night we were there, um, this old man had a bunk up on top, on the third one. And he said to my mother, he said, you and your daughter, you meant my sister, you go sleep up there. He said, I sleep with the little one down here. And she said, why? Well, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And he said, well, you better. He said, you're going to find out because the Russians come in at night, drag the women out and rape them. And that was going on consistently all the time we stayed there. I don't know exactly how long we stayed there, but it was quite a few days. Mm -hmm. And then they put us on a train, and we didn't still didn't know where we were going. Really? I had no idea. And um, we were on a train, oh gosh for weeks because the Russians would come and take the locomotive and it'd take forever for them to bring it back, days sometimes, you know. And one time uh, there was, again, they had taken the locomotive and there was a, we were standing at a, at a station mm -hmm. still and there was a line, some of the farmers had come and brought milk. And so my aunt and I went and stood in line, you know, to get the milk. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, the Russians had brought the locomotive back. And we had just, we hadn't even gotten the milk yet. All of a sudden, the train started going. And we were kind of in the middle of the, of our wagon was in the middle of the train. Uh -huh. And we were running, she had, had me, and we, she was dragging me, I mean, you know, because we didn't want to miss the train and get separated. Yeah. And there were two guys on the outside of the train, just standing on the platform. Mm -hmm. And they grabbed, first they grabbed me, and then they grabbed my aunt, and we made it up on the train. Oh, wow. Yeah. I remember I, I had scratches all up on my knee, and so did my aunt. And uh, so anyway, we went a little further and to make a long story short, um, what they would do, we found out, they go to these through these little towns, farm towns, and the, in Germany the farms are different than they're here. Mm -hmm. In Germany, a farm is for it's a, it's. A, Usually just one street, and then you got houses right next to each other on each side of the street. In the middle of it, you got a cemetery, and in the middle of that, you got a church. Okay. And they got their fields outside of the village. Okay. Instead of here, you know, you one farm is far apart from the other. Yes. And what they would do is stop in these little farm towns, and they call people's name. They had that all sorted out, and they would get off the train, and then there would be the mayor and the farmer mm -hmm. to pick you up, and uh, then you get to work for them, and they have to take care of you, you know, because all they needed work so bad on the farms, because mm -hmm. all the guys had died. So anyway, we came to this town. And it was 
was called Metzl Team. You have to write that down. M E T H. Z E L T I N. So they called all of our names when we got off the train. There was just the mayor there. And he, he took us to uh, the guest house. They had a big dance hall. And it was all laid out with straw. Because they didn't have any bedding. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I remember they brought sandwiches and milk to drink. And, and we stayed, we slept right on that straw. And then we got, we had to wait there for a few days while they were sorting out which farmer gets whom, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we got to go to that one farmer. Okay, and so my mom worked for him, and my brother did, and my sister. Mm -hmm. And there was no such thing as babysitting service, you know. Right. I had to go to the field. Mm -hmm. with my mom and when when there were uh, say for example when there were uh, planted potatoes mm -hmm. for an example uh, my mom had one of those big bags full of little potatoes around her and she would and he was in front with, with a thing that makes the holes mm -hmm. and she would drop potato and step on it you know well, I had a bucket with potatoes in it. So from the time I was, I wasn't even five yet. But at that time, that was the following spring, uh -huh. I was five. But at that, at that time, oh, this must have been the end of July, something. Oh, yeah, it must have been the end of July, beginning of, of August, when we got the Metro team. And um, it was right when you bring in all the harvest, so it was the busiest time. And we had, we had, I had to help out. Mm -hmm. I, they taught me how to milk cows. And when I was, and then the really weird part was, you know, these people are all German. So were we. Uh, we spoke a totally different language. Oh yeah. Because in Germany's got. I'm uh, I'm not totally positive. I have to ask my my daughter. Um, Germany has got either fifty two or thirty two different dialects. As small a country as it is. The same language, just different dialects. You wow. go from one town to the next, and they speak a different dialect. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because I had a hard time going from Berlin to down south to uh, uh, by Munich. <laughs> I didn't understand the word they were saying, and I'm German, you know. But anyway, um, so they they kind of kept the distance, and they didn't want their kids to play with me, you know. Like I was, and that's how it was. All the time I lived there. Really? Yeah, and it got worse later. But that's. I had played by myself when I had playtime. Yeah. And then um, when I was six, um, I would. Uh, no, before that, there was another woman that got off the train. She was also, also lived in the same town. Mm -hmm. Went to school with my grandma, and uh, she got off from mezzotine also. And on Sunday, my uh, if we didn't go to church because we were we were Catholic, and this was all Protestant, the whole area. Okay. So the, uh, what they would do, they didn't do it right away, but probably a year after, uh, they had a Catholic priest come to the nearest, uh, to the nearest uh, city mm -hmm. 
and we would walk there and then take the train back. But it was a good four mile walk. And we would have Catholic service. We would have yeah. Catholic service there, but never in the town we lived. Mm -hmm. uh, and we would go. But on the Sundays, we, we, we were with, there wasn't church. She would go to her friend. She had a little room that she rented from somebody. And uh, I mean, it was free. Didn't have to pay any rent. And I would go with her. And those two women would sit there and uh, talk about the old days, you know, when they were young and going to school. That just fascinated me. Yeah. And I sit on this little foot bench. I knew how to knit, crochet, uh, embroider, all of that by the time I was six. Wow. And you learned it from those ladies? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, from my grandma and that lady. And then at, oh, say, about four o'clock in the afternoon, she always had a little cake baked. And especially in, when food was out, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, she had a strawberry cake and a drink coffee. And I always got a piece of strawberry cake. Like, yeah, I remember that so fondly. So anyway, when I was six, I started school. And we lived right across from the cemetery. And uh, we had two rooms. My room had no heat in it whatsoever. Wow. Had one long window, and it was maybe from there to here. Okay. You could put, uh, I had a twin bed, between the twin bed and the wall, it was like this much. That was it. And it, it was all, you know, long. Uh -huh. and at the end of my bed, we had a huge wicker basket. I don't know where my mom got that from. That all, our dishes were in there. And in the winter time, she would. Uh, and in the other room, we had a we had a stove, a tile stove, and you heat it with wood. You start with wood and then coal, uh -huh. and uh, it had like a compartment in that you could open up. Mm -hmm. And she would put a blanket in there. I had a feather bed, but she put a blanket in there. And then when, when I was getting ready for bed, I would stand up in my bed and she wrapped that blanket around me and then I would lay down on my right side and she took that feather bed over. I would never move. <laughs> I never moved. And I remember that waking so up, nice. you know, and from from breathing, the feather bed got all stiff, you know, and uh, so cold. Yeah. And uh, anyway, when I went to, I started school, and which was right across the street, which was nice. I like, I liked school. And uh, so I went there for first grade and second grade. When third grade came around, they moved it to the next town. Okay. So I had to, all, the other kids all had bicycles. I wanted a bicycle so bad, but my mom couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I walked. I found a shortcut between the, there was a little walk, maybe this wide, between the wheat fields and, and the huge big meadow. And I found mushrooms, I knew what they were, uh -huh. you know, that I would bring back and, and my grandma would make them. And I'd bring her wildflowers and she would say, uh, Annalise, please don't bring me any more flowers. I'm running out of containers. <laughs> but your house looks beautiful. <laughs> yeah, but that's why I love flowers now. Okay. I'm florist by profession. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There you go. So, when they moved that, they couldn't go with the, with the bicycles through that. They had to go around the, on the street in order to get that down. So I wasn't bullied too much, you know, I was on my own. But so I w we went there, I went there for two years, two more years. Then they moved it to a different town, which was, I would say, a good five miles. Okay. 
and you had to take a train or walk. Okay. Well, if the weather was nice, I had to walk. My mom was making approximately four dollars a week, and if you wanted, we had a castle in that town, and they took one room from that castle and made it into a grocery store. And but if you wanted to have meat or lunch meat, you got ra you had ration cards. You had rations for butter, sugar, uh, and meat. Uh -huh. You had to go to this one guy's house. It was an old man, and uh, uh, more about that later. Uh, and he, you would tell him you want, say for example, a pound of pork rolls. And he would write it down and he cut it off your ration card. Mm -hmm. and that would be on a Tuesday, you had to do that. Then on Saturday you go to the castle, to the grocery store and pick it up. Oh wow. Because the butcher would bring it to all the people. They didn't have any facility there. Mm -hmm. Now on Wednesday, uh, we had a guy come, this was so neat. He had a, a covered wagon and a horse. He was a baker, and he would come from the city, from the other city, where we went to church at, and brought us fresh bread, uh, fresh, yeah, I'm not talking German, <laughs> <laughs> fresh bread and those East, yeast heart rolls, they're called Bridget. Okay. And I would get um, a loaf of bread mm -hmm. and two of those brochets, and it was so warm, and the German bread is so Oh my gosh, not like that white stuff there, yeah. Yeah. And I could not resist, I would break a piece off <laughs> and eat it back to my house. <laughs> you could not resist. I could not resist, and my mom gets so mad at me. <laughs> and then Saturdays, we had down in the basement, there was a, a a stove, and in the stove there was a huge kettle, uh -huh. just really big around. And they used that when they would kill a pig, you know, just to make their own meat and stuff. Mm -hmm. The butcher come and you do it. And you could use it for, we used it for laundry. You boil your white laundry in there, uh -huh. and you boil water in there. And they had one of those wooden tubs, it was kind of oval had a handle on each side, so on Saturdays, my mom would heat that thing with water, and mind you, you had to get the water from the, where the horses, from the horse stall, where the horses were, but by the bucket, and mm -hmm. fill that big thing. Oh my goodness. And heat it up, so it'd be a while. And uh, we would have a, I would have my bath, get my hair washed, and but before that, she made me go to the guest house, and she liked the dark beer, uh -huh. the real dark malt beer, mm -hmm. and I would buy a bottle of that and a bottle of Red Pop. Okay. It reminds me of it, but they were only about like that big, so uh, I was looking forward to that. And then after I got tucked in the bed, she take the, we get the weekly, the farmer get the weekly paper uh -huh. from the next town, mm -hmm. and he would give it to my mom, and she sit in that tub, you know, the feet up like that, <laughs> and two big buckets of hot water next to her, you know, to keep putting that in, and oh my gosh, every Saturday, and during the week, we wash at night from top to bottom. Yeah. We didn't work. Well, when it was, when it was, um, for example, uh, harvest time, when there were, it's called threshing. You get the, it's a machine, and you put the, uh, the big bundles of wheat in there, and it gets the corn, the kernels out. Okay. And it's really, really dusty and stuff. And my mom always wore 
something on her head, you know. Like she would wash her hair a couple times during the week because it gets just so dusty. But other than that, we just strip down and wash from top to bottom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Much different from today. Yeah. Much different. How long did you stay there? In I stayed there until I was 15. Oh, wow. So that's home to you, pretty much. And when I was... Uh, when I had to go to the other school in the wintertime, my grandma would give me money so I to ride the train. But when it was warm, you know, that I could ride the train there. I had to walk back in the winter time. Okay. But just so I could ride the train in the morning, because mm -hmm. it was still dark out. I had to get up earlier than all the other kids. You walk five miles, you don't have any boots. Oh, I had yeah. galoshes. Oh my goodness. And my grandma had these, to buy these square gray rags to clean with. Uh -huh. and she put two or three of them together and tie them around my legs, and I go in my galoshes. Well, if I walk five miles in that, you know, it gets all bundled, and you got nothing but your sock and the galoshes. My feet, I, that my feet never froze. I'm amazed. Yeah. Amazed. But when I was, when I was 12, that guy that cut the, that did the food, we call it food stamps or ration card. Uh -huh. uh, he started to molest me. Really? Well, he had the street that went from our town into the next town. The beginning of that street. There was on each side, there were cherry trees, those big black cherries, sweet cherries. Mm -hmm. And as kids, we would go and he would ride on the bike back and forth, back and forth to shoot the kids away. Because we would get the ones that were falling off the tree. Uh -huh. But but if he was on that end, we hide in the wheat fields. <laughs> and then, you know, go on this end and pick up. Uh -huh. And then the boys sometimes go up and shake them. You know. And, oh, he was mean, he was mean. So anyway, he said to me, uh, I was 11, because I was 12 when it went on trial. Let me know when you want to stop. No, keep going. I just want to make sure it's still going, that's all. I should have brought some water. <coughs> I'm finding some water real quick, if you want. Do you have some? I'm sure we can find something. Okay. I'll be right back. I didn't even think about bringing water. You are very welcome. Actually, so anyway, he, uh, I went to the order the meat. He gave me a whole bowl of cherries, and I said, "Well, that's nice." I was so innocent. I mean, my mother never talked to me about sex or anything, you know. I mean, I was 11 years old, mm -hmm. barely. And uh, he started molesting me. He said, if you let me do that, he said, you can eat all the cherries. You can have all the cherries you want. Wow. Well, he was just touching me, so I thought there was nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So I brought home a whole bowl of cherries to my grandma. She said, where'd you get those? And I said, from Mr. Schertz. 
And she said, you just gave them to me. I said, yeah, you told me I could have them. So she canned them. Mm -hmm. And then the next week again, you know. Well, it got more and more than the cherry season was over. Mm -hmm. And he would make me a nice big sandwich with lunch meat on it. Because huh. what I ate at school, you had to bring your own lunch. You know, the farmer's girls, uh, uh, they all had their sandwiches with ham on it and liver sausage and all that. Mm -hmm. I had margarine on each side with a little salt. And that was it. Oh, wow. Because you also got butter, only got butter with, with uh, stamps. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, when it was warm, open up my sandwich, there was nothing there, the margarine had melted, you mm -hmm. know. And it wasn't good margarine, it was awful margarine. Yeah. And uh, so that caught me. And then that went on for about, I really don't know, I think maybe, maybe three months, four months. And the one time, no, it went on for all year because the following year again, and he told me to come out with a bag and uh, um, I can pick them. And he molested me, there was a little gully going down, you know, before the wheat field. Uh -huh. And he molested me in there, and somebody drove by on, the, on a bicycle and seen it. Because I remember coming home from school and going in, a, in, in the room, and there's my mother during, I mean, being home early, you know, mm -hmm. and, and a man. That man? No. I'm saying. No. It was a detective. 